St. Alphonsus Liguri. Who was this doctor of the church? What can we learn from him? He was an Italian theologian. He was a scholastic philosopher, basing his writings on the Church Fathers. He was a Catholic bishop. Importantly, he was the pioneer of moral theology, this being a response to the heresies of Jansenism. He also presented an intellectual defense of Mariology, defending the positions of St. Augustine and St. Ambrose of Milan and other church fathers. Alphonsus was born on the 27th of September 1696 and was the eldest of, the eight, of his eight siblings. He, was a, he, he wanted to be a military officer but had asthma and poor eyesight which prevented this. We are always amazed at how our biggest detours are often pointers to our greatest glories in God. A Portuguese saying sums this up perfectly. God draws straight with crooked lines. This was so true for the life of this great saint. He started working as a lawyer at 16. And although this path promised him earthly comfort and success, he realized at a young age that leading a materialistic life would count for nothing when standing before God at the end of it. He, studied, he chose to study theology, deciding to become a priest. His father initially disapproved of Alphonsus' plans of giving up materialistic life and embracing sainthood, but later agreed to his son's request. This resistance is experienced by many who choose to reject the ways of the world to walk closely with our Lord. He founded the Redemptorist Congregation in 1732. This was an association of priests and brothers living in community. They were dedicated to the imitation of Christ and worked in missions, serving the poor in rural areas. Almost as an omen of what he would experience down the line, he found himself alone, deserted by all his original companions, except for one lay brother. Amazingly, the congregation survived and was officially approved 17 years later. At 71, Alfonso suffered from rheumatic pains, which resulted in an incurable bending of his neck. Until it was straightened a little, the pressure of his chin on his chest caused a raw wound. Along with the suffering, he endured a final 18 months of dark nights, where he felt abandoned and unworthy. He also faced fears and temptations against every article of faith and every virtue. These, however, were punctuated by moments of light and relief, and spiritual ecstasies were frequent. St. Alphonsus was a patient and charitable man, and is known to have walked alongside his flock in order to draw them deeper into deeper communion with Christ. Accompaniment, which is the buzzword of our day, does not imply a change in moral teaching or turning a blind eye. Our Lord speaks forcefully about those priests who would lead others to sin, which is why any form of accompaniment that turns a blind eye or encourages someone to ignore God's laws is to rupture communion, destroy charity, betray their ordination, and to ignore the spiritual fatherhood priests are called to live. God's mercy is a form of leniency, but not as a departure from the truth. In a time when confession has become a throwaway sacrament for many, too many Catholics, and this includes some priests and is sadly often too difficult to access, St. Alphonsus shows us how much we need God's love and mercy in the sacrament. All priests should always seek to draw sinners back to God. This requires a much need of refocusing on the balance between sound moral theology and mercy. God's mercy is abundant when sincerely seeking it through the sacrament of confession. St. Alphonsus is the perfect intercessor for this great need, as he had a love for souls. He is also a much needed intercessor for the priesthood, 
during this time of scandal. St. Alphonsus is a patron saint of confessors, those suffering from arthritis and moral, theolo moral theologians. Alphonsus is best known for his moral theology, but he also wrote books in the field of spiritual and, dogma and dogmatic theology. We're going to look at two of his greatest works. Thanks to our Saint of the Week, St. Alphonsus Liguri, as Catholics, we have become rich in treasures due to his writings. And I'm going to look at two books that are one of his greatest, well, two of his greatest masterpieces. Firstly, it's the preparation for death. I suggest every Catholic, every person in this world should be preparing for death. And St. Alphonsus makes that known, that constantly we should be thinking of our death. Constantly we should be living lives on how we need to prepare for judgment. This book is a really good read, but it also teaches you that this life is short and if we are not focusing on eternity, then we are just being folly. Secondly, we have the glories of Mary. Now, we noted about St. Alphonsus that he was very good with his Mariology. He was, a, he was very, very, very devoted to Our Lady, prayed the rosary every day, and he was an advocate for the rosary. And this book comes through. Now, one of the prayers that the Catholic Church, and a lot of Catholics don't know, but it's a, such a rich prayer, it's the Hail Holy Queen. Now, St. Alphonsus explains the Hail Holy Queen and his sermons and why our Blessed Mother is so important to a Catholic and why we need to stay close to her. So I suggest these two books every Catholic should have in their home, the preparation for death, because if we're not prepared for death, we will be damned. And the glories of Mary, which will inspire us to have a devout relationship with our Queen, Our Lady, the Blessed Mother. St. Alphonsus Liguri, pray for us. And remember, fight the good fight and keep the faith.